Good evening, everyone, or good afternoon. This meeting is now being recorded. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the Town of Amherst. At some point, this video will get uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. And at this time, I'd like to hand things over to the chair, Professor Austin Serrett. Thank you, Angie. Thanks so much. It's nice to see everybody. So uh, just as is our tradition. Real quick, before... Austin, we're still in um, practice session. We're good. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. It's nice to see everybody. I'm going to ask you to signify your presence vocally. Sharon? Here. Thank you. Sean? Here. Thank you. Christine? Here. Nice to see you. Alex? Here. And George? Here. Thank you. And Austin is here. Okay, we have no minutes. We have no town manager uh, report since a manager can't join us today. Sean. Really quick uh, financial update. We met with um, Craig on Friday to go over some of the um, pending contracts. Um, I think we talked about that there's a um, possible survey that we want to look at um, expanding. Uh, there's the uh, commissioning services, um, both some optional commissioning services that we can uh, elect during sort of this design phase. And then there's some required commissioning services that we have to uh, contract for post or once construction starts or post construction. Um, and then we also, and, and Craig, correct if I correct me if I miss anything. And then we also uh, went over a proposal from Collier's uh, for just basically to cover now until uh, construction bidding because we've sort of used up their fee um, because of some of the delays in the project um, so far. So um, the good news on the what we've seen so far is that the increase is not it's not as uh, significant as you'd expect because there were some savings on the back end um, in the length of construction. So some of the savings on the back end and the length of construction are reducing the overall increase that we're we're discussing. Um, but we're still having conversations around that. Um, and all three of those topics, and our goal is to have them all resolved by Friday, next Friday. Uh, we've we've reached out to Craig just to make sure, like, what is our deadline to get these all resolved without any further delays in the project. We're very uh, conscious of that, um, and so we'll have them all wrapped up by Friday. And so I'll give you another update. Hopefully, by our meeting next Thursday, we can we'll have a final uh, update on those three uh, services. Thank you, Sean. Any questions for Sean? Did I miss one, Craig? I feel like I missed one. That I was there a, a fourth. No, I, I think you 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 caught them all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Next item is Collier's. Craig, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Having me. All right. So um, I'll start if I may share my screen. Perfect. I'll start with the overall schedule very quickly. So here we are at the red line um, in the beginning of February. Sorry, it's there we go. Uh, so still in design development, approaching the fifty percent mark, but not which will be you know in the in March. Um, also, sort of on the topic of schedule, um, we have a series. As you all know, we have a series of meetings lined up for this committee and for the design subcommittee kind of joint meetings um, in this beginning part of design development to kind of get through a lot of issues very quickly. Um, in coordinating the upcoming weeks with the design team, uh, they proposed instead of meeting twice a week, so on the left-hand side of my screen, I know it's teeny tiny, left-hand side is the, the standing list of meetings, the right-hand side is the proposed changes that I wanted to review tonight. Um, Instead of meeting twice a week over the next two weeks, so that'd be February 14th and the 16th, and then again, the 21st and 23rd, uh, there's a, a proposal to streamline that a little bit. So we would just be meeting on Thursday, the February 16th. So we're meeting tonight, of course, and okay. Thursday, the 16th. So that's next Thursday. Skip the... Uh, meeting that was going to occur on February vacation and instead push that meeting to March 2nd. Um, 
So the, the idea here is um, in, you know, you'll, the committee will still have the opportunity to view things and then decide on them, um, sort of in two, two separate steps. Um, but uh, kind of streamlined a little bit. So the reason why we're bringing this up, uh, it's easy to eliminate meetings, but moving a meeting from, uh, I think this one was February 23rd, moving it to March 2nd, wanted to gauge everyone's availability uh, and if that is doable. Okay, and your revised schedule, Craig, shows no meeting on February 14th? Correct. Okay, George. Uh, I will not be able to attend the meeting on the 16th. I was kind of hoping it would be on the 14th, but as long as there's a quorum, I, if I'm the only one, then it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Uh, let's uh, look at the, the proposed swap of the, uh, whatever is 21st to March 2nd. How about the March 2nd meeting? Are people able to attend the March 2nd meeting? Okay, I think hearing no dissent so far, we're good on the second. And just want to confirm, following up on what George says, uh, are we good other than George on the 16th of February? I'll be unable to make the 16th. Can't make the 16th. Xander can't make it. George can't make it. So we may have a quorum if Sean can make it, Vanika can make it. I can make it, Sean. Right. Okay. So let's let's hold the meeting on the hold the meeting on the 16th. And Sharon, if you can just reach out and let people know and see whether we will in fact have a have a quorum. Will do. All right. So Craig, are you good on that schedule? Yes. Thank you. And so what I'll do is I'll clean this up so it doesn't have all right. the red all over it, and I'll reissue it so that everyone's got a nice clean copy. Thank you. I'll stop sharing my screen now. The, the, um, the next item under uh, my reporting is actually some design uh, topics. Um, these are things that we have seen before uh, or at the last meeting or two. Um, the design team is going to walk us through first the location and quantity of interior and exterior renderings. Um, and then after that is done, the um, uh, another look at the, the gender inclusive restroom layout. They have some improvements that they wanted to uh, review with this committee. Great. So I'll turn I'll turn over the screen to Josephine. Will you be sharing? Thanks, Greg. Yes, I'll be sharing my screen. May and... I just interrupt one sec, Josephine, just before you start? Sharon, okay. Sharon, have you been in touch with AAA, uh, the AAA, FAA about these renderings? Uh, I don't think I have. So you have no proposal for uh, the, the renderings that you would like us to approve? I do have a proposal from the Capital Campaign Committee, but I don't think I've told FAA yet. So why don't you share with everybody the proposal that uh, you would like us to consider? Sure. And that so, would help, I think, move, move this conversation along. Okay. So uh, they're looking for seven altogether, uh, but Tony was talking about you know being able to finagle or um, negotiate for an extra. So the first one is the front exterior the the existing one for that for that rendering to be updated the second is for the back exterior the rear exterior the the one that we have now for that to be updated and then a new front exterior uh that would show the historic preservation that would be a brand new rendering and i i think what tony had suggested was coming from like the center of town that, that that intersection there. The fourth one is this a, a view from the second floor, um, and and what it, what they're saying is either updating the current stacks and the sawtooth version, or changing the angle to the center and then looking back towards the new team room. Uh, we're looking for one of the restored reading rooms on the, the second floor, the, the front there. Uh, one of the children's library, uh, a new rendering. Um, that would be lovely. Uh, 
And, and the last one, the seventh one, is for the barrel vaulted hall, uh, the new rendering there. Okay, thank you for that. Josephine, did you, did you manage to get all that down? Yep. <laughs> so why don't you now, with that, everybody has that in, in their mind, so to speak, why don't you walk us through these, these uh, renderings so we'll all have a sense of what it was we were just talking about. Sure, and, and so Tony's gonna run us through the renderings. Um, thank you. We will start on the interior and then move to the exterior. And okay. um, Tony, you can go ahead. Okay, you can screen share, Josephine. Oh, am I not yet? Sorry, I thought I, thought I clicked on it. <laughs> Let's see. There you go. Can you see that now? Okay, yes, yeah. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Um, so this this level is the primary, you know, entry level. Um, and what we've marked here is three views uh which i think speak to what sharon just mentioned so on the on the left side this is in the children's library area and i think we're going to be zeroing in in more in this more active zone as is kind of outlined in where the blue arrows are sort of pointing towards um back there because i think that's going to showcase more of the kind of activities and character the second one is which is in the middle this is on the main level of course in the center but this view is looking back towards the circulation desk and the stair and part of the historic building. I think this was requested a view that looked in this direction. So this is what we're proposing in this view setup. Um, and then the third view on the far right is of the barrel vaulted space, um, pretty much head on view looking into that double height space. So these are the three interior views on the ground floor. We understand Sharon, the one view here that you did not mention was this one in particular. Correct. Um, so of course, one of our views will, um, in, the important part is that one of our views will be looking back at the original building okay. from within the new edition. So we can definitely, you know, continue the conversation, but this is what we currently um, have proposed. And then when we go to the second floor, um, which is primarily adult collection, so Again, starting at the bottom of the page, that is a view in the existing historic room, looking back towards where the fireplace is seen in that view angle, um, uh, as, as described, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the next view is in the middle of the space. This is essentially the view that we've already been using professionally that's gonna be modified to reflect the change in the design, but it's the one you've already seen. And then the third view is the young adult, uh, teen area in the back looking, again, to try to capture as much of the activity in this space looking towards the right. Uh, so this is the, um, I guess those are these three plus the three below constitutes six views. And we can talk a little bit more about this because I think there is, there is, as you said, Sharon, there's a little bit of negotiation. We're able to work with our render in terms of the fee structure to help shave on cost. Can I just say, Tony, so um, Tony, Josephine, um, uh, maybe lovely. If we can get everything, all of these, that would be great. But regarding the teen room, um, if if costs ends up being a thing, that would be the one that the capital campaign committee specifically would like to not do, only okay. because their primary goal is to raise money, and and the teens, you know. Don't do that for us. But that that's just the Capital Campaign Committee. Sure. I, I haven't spoken with the full JLPC. Understood. So that would be the one that could drop if it, it proves to be, you know, out of the um, eight that you really want to get at. So this is the ninth. Okay. Um, so then on the exterior, excuse me, um, please feel free to interrupt if there's any questions. So uh, we, we had discussed an alternate before we go into that reading room because the other historic space, of course, is the top floor, kind of the which you currently use as a trust room because that's a very, it's a very handsome space, you know, has a lot of volume. So the other option could be this instead of the second floor one. This is entirely up to you, but we were just feeling that if you're trying to go for um, kind of impact, this is another thought. 
as an alternate to the second floor reading room at the front. So you can either weigh in or think about that, but this is an option. Tony, hold on one sec. So does anybody want to weigh in on this question about the third floor versus the second floor reading room? I would just quickly like to say I'm still in favor of the second floor front reading rooms only because those spaces aren't being used by the public right now. And it's a chance for us to say, look at what you've been missing. Got Thank it. you. So George? we'll stick with the second floor one. Oh, like. Hold on a second, Tony. George? Uh, yeah, echoing what Sharon said, you know, the 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 third floor of the, the meeting room uh, is not going to physically look a lot different. It's going to be nicer. But uh, again, the, the reading room is something that the public has not seen in 30, 40 years. So I would I would still go with the reading room myself. OK, anybody else want to weigh in on that? OK, Tony, it looks like we're good with the trade off of the third floor for the second floor. Got it. Thank you very much. And then I think the last views we discussed is on the outside, <laughs> excuse me. So again, um, starting with the left, that is the view that we already have, uh, which is gonna be, you know, tweaked, um, mostly with site stuff um, and whatever mother modifications off of Avenue Street. Uh, the second one is taken from the rear, um, you know, where we also have been seen before, but again, it's gonna modify based on the rework landscape aspects of it, <laughs> excuse me. And then the third new view um, is on Amity, going back to Amity Street on the front, taken from this corner. Um, we're actually thinking that um, we might frame this a little bit where the um, bank building in the foreground on the right is going to kind of frame this angle shot. One, we want to emphasize it's in a bigger kind of streetscape context. So having an adjacent, even a piece of the adjacent building next to it, I think it's useful. Uh, plus it will actually in some ways mitigate somewhat the scale issue, because I know this is going to be a question from the commission, historical commission. So I think it will actually make the appearance of the addition part fairly modest in this view, which I think is important. We, it's, it's not gonna deny that you're gonna see stuff, but we're gonna just simply say that when you actually see it from the public realm on that side of the view, um, it is pretty modest. So this is our intent. So yeah, there's, what, what is the dotted line? Oh, that was, that was an alternate view that was, I think, discussed that some some might have been concerned. Well, you know, the, the rear view we're taking from is from basically the, you know, a strong museum corner is not on your property, but we're thinking that, you know, the one advantage of that strong view corner is that it shows the whole design. And if we pull, for example, the view on the rear just to where the pathway comes from CVS lot, it's gonna be pretty cut off because you're gonna just, first, there's a lot of landscape in the foreground, second, you won't capture the full design and it's going to be primary looking towards the you know foreground landscape being a bit of the entrance that places the view in your property proper but we just think it's probably not going to be as effective view certainly from a from a marketing selling standpoint from fundraising um, because it's that's almost to my way of thinking it's more like informational view but it's not going to be nearly as dramatic as the view we already have in the rear okay sharon no, Tony answered my question. Thank you. So no, before you before you go, oh. so you are content with the three views that are shown in the solid lines? Yeah, we do like those three. And and Tony just convinced me about uh, the North Prospect parking lot, the dotted line. We we can let that go. Um, I do have I do have a question going back to the first floor. That picture taken facing the circ desk into the. Um, you know, towards the Amity Street entrance. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm feeling like if costs need to be cut, that is another one that could be cut. Okay. I mean, Those I are think, all my I, thoughts. Okay. I think we can look at that for you and, and come up with an updated proposal, Sharon. Um, but again, we're hopeful that because three out of these um, seven, eight views already been recreated, the, the render is definitely going to save money for us because they're just going to rework those views already that were done awesome thank so you we hope that we can get you eight views within the budgetary constraints but we'll but we'll you know we'll we'll price it accordingly and tell you what it is okay anybody else uh, want to ask a question or weigh in on these renderings okay uh, uh alex 
Yeah, um, so I just had a question about the rendering for the children's space and it was more just, was it felt that the biggest bang for the buck is the new sort of activity room versus, you know, the old space leading out to a play? Like, I guess, why did we choose that particular area and is that the best bang for our buck? Part of it, that's a really great question, Alex. Part of it is that, um, you know, as you can see, based on our current plan layout, um, in the historic part of the library, it's essentially a lot of bookshelf stacks in there, even though they're low. So in some ways, the and, and of course, this could be subject to more design. But right now, at the moment, um, what you're going to see if you take it from the historic part, looking back, for example, you're going to have a fair amount of just stacks. Um, in that view because of the way it's currently designed. Now, if you were standing like at the CERT desk, uh, for example, it's another view, possibly we considered uh, where just means marking, looking back towards the, this, you're in the new part now looking back. Uh, we could we could establish that as another view, but uh, what, what happens there is that at the moment, again, at the moment, there is computer stations in the foreground, there's some seating, of course you have the CERT desk and you're viewing back across the whole children's library. So that is another possibility. One of the things that as we're looking at these views set up internally, we're, we're trying to ascertain what showcases the best. The, the reason I think in part we chose the um, back portion is we felt that provided the greatest opportunity to capture more of the range of activities. So there will be children sitting at tables, there'll be book stacks, there will be children in maybe more lounge type furniture. Uh, so there's gonna be a, a, a kind of a, a variety, but. We, we can we can look at this again more carefully about what we're trying to do with this view um, because I know the children obviously is a very important space so we try to figure out how to showcase it the best possible way. Sharon. Yeah, piggybacking on Alex, it would be super awesome if you could get a, a, you know a view from the back in the newer part all the way through to the uh, historic so that you could show yeah. people that they're getting the new and the old. But I do understand. Yeah that the stacks are there. Why don't we why don't we take a little closer look at this again? We, we know that this this one um, program space um, is the one that probably requires a little bit this more scrutiny. So and even if we have to force some change in the furniture layout, frankly, for the advantage of the perspective, we will do that. So we will we will modify the perspective to showcase it the best possible, even if the plan shows something here. But as you well know, at this certain stage of this project, um, there's still a lot that has to be fleshed out yet. Great. So why don't we why don't we zero in on this a little bit more carefully? Come back to you on that. But but we know we want a space rendering in this space somehow. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you all. Uh, Craig, Tony, Josephine, next. Oh, sorry, Sean. Yeah. Thanks, Austin. I um I failed to uh, bring up. Uh, we did have an invoice that needs approval from fine gold um is it possible if i bring it up now so we can vote on that sure okay i'll share my screen real quick uh, Thank as soon you, as... josephine do you um can you stop do sharing I... for once oh do i need to let go for you to take over i didn't want to be rude and just take it so oh, just take, take it over <laughs> All right, so this is um, invoice from Fine Gold Alexander Architects through December 31st of 2022. Um, it's consistent with the uh, contract that we have in place with them. Right. And that's for $20,750. So Sean, you wanna move its approval? I move that we approve uh, the December invoice from Fine Gold Alexander Architects. A second, please. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, ready to vote to approve. Yes is to approve, no is not. Sean? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. Thank you, Alex? Yes. Thank you, George? Yes. Thank you, and Austin votes yes. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Okay, Craig, back to you. Thank you, and I'll uh, pitch the mic back to Feingold Alexander to show off uh, the some of the improvements they've made to the gender inclusive toilet layout. Great. I realized that we had some images that we inserted as well oh, yeah. that we didn't talk through, Tony. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So this, this, for example, is the view angle from the front, the alternate yeah. one shows shows the foreground context, and you can see here how 
when we show the new addition um, into this, it's going to be pretty modest. But it's some it's a view along that lines. And and these are just quick snapshots from our Matterport scan. This shows yep. that reading room on the second floor. Yep. Just I mean, yeah, I know you know this, but sorry, take in a second. And then this is the one that we 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 are not doing, but of course that's your major yeah. space on the top. Okay, so let's talk about the bathroom uh, gender bathroom update. So we took into account the discussion points from last week, and here's how we revised it. And I'm going to just try to explain this. And Justin, if you just drag your mouse across it, that's fine. So we still have the entrance, of course, coming from the right in the public realm. Uh, the big difference that we looked at here is first and foremost, we do have nine stalls shown. Uh, we did a review on the code issues and we do need this number, but the way we've handled it is so the family restroom in this redesign has been shifted to the front corner. So in other words, when you come into the gender neutral bathroom, the first one you basically get at is the family restroom. Uh -huh. So that enables folks to really get into that part first um, before even having to go into the rest of the restroom while still contained within the overall restroom family. And then once you move into the, the rest of the layout, um, you can see here, we've organized the, jiggered the, the layout to fit still the nine stalls. We're trying to address the fact that, you know, in the ADA stalls, we have, you know, sufficient area for changing tables, fold down tables. Of course, the family restroom has its own sink and fold down table. And we've also cleaned up the um, the sink area too. Before we had kind of a U-shape configuration. We believe this is better, this L-shape, because it affords more room to move around. It's more generous. It still provides us six sinks. Um, and then we jiggered some of the door openings into the stall so that we didn't have the conflict of doors overlapping other doors, particularly at the corners. So I think the, the, the gist of it is that we believe that this layout responds to the comments from last week. We still have a janitor's clause in the bottom. And then in place of the uh, former uh, family restroom in the upper right, uh, that is converted back to gallery storage um, as we previously discussed. So this this is the revised accommodation for the layout. Great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you to you and your colleagues for your work on this. So questions, uh, observations about this um, layout? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Christine. Um, yeah, um, thanks Tony for working and working on this. Um, I just, you have another one down below. Um, and my issue with this one is still the way the doors open and close at the bottom that if you're in those bottom center stalls, you could be opening the stall to come out and there's doors kind of opening in front of you. Um, it's still a little pinchy and that above the janitorial closet I believe you have a child changing station there and that it, it just seems kind of small because the anytime anytime I'm changing a child I always usually have a stroller with me and that stall is just a little small to fit the stroller to also be changing a child. Thank you Christine. Tony? Um, I, I think that the the opening of the door question, uh, we can take another look at that. But I think that vis-a-vis um, -vis the idea of having one door open in front of the other, I mean, I think we're trying to tighten this, not tighten this down, excuse me, trying to make as much accommodation to all of these aspects. I mean, I think the the area that we are, you know, as you can see, the, the pinch point is, you know, could we tighten down the janitor's clause a little bit more, perhaps, to engender a little bit more graciousness? We can take another look at that, um, if there's a way to even diminish the janitor's closet a little bit further to in order to still gain more room. Uh, there was one alternate layout, you're correct, um, which I don't know, Joseph, if you want to pull up, yep. there was the alternate, um, there was a group of them in a row that mm -hmm. we showed. So this one uh, um, is a different layout configuration. Here, what we're showing is that still coming in from the right-hand side, um, but in this scenario, now the janitor's closet has moved to the north and plan north. And, and the family restroom, again, is the 
first one that uh, you encounter when you're coming into the restroom configuration. But then once you go past that and you turn, uh, what this does in the internal layout is now we've actually organized all six sinks in a row. So they're not bent in an L. And therefore, the other question that you had, Christine, in relation to door conflicts in the size of the handicap cell, this allows us to have slightly larger handicap stalls at the bottom and the doors do not conflict. So this was an alternate layout. Uh, the, I think the only slight caveat is that when you're coming out of the art gallery, there is a door that appears to the janitor's closet. But other than that, this is a reconfiguration in a different layout. Yeah. Okay, other uh, thoughts about, uh, yeah, George. Um, yeah, I'm actually more in favor of this version um partially because at least now the janitorial closet is on the same level as the bathroom whereas where it was before you would have to either navigate stairs or the elevator with a mop bucket um but i i i tend to like this layout a bit better i think it's more it appears more spacious for mobility as well right sharon yeah, I agree with George. I, I like the the bigger stalls. Uh, the the doors aren't aren't hitting each other. And I, I George, I didn't. I would not have noticed that. Um, beautiful. My guys are accustomed to carrying mop buckets downstairs, so <laughs> I wasn't going to argue that. But I like this better. Thank you, Alex. Um, I just want to echo. I definitely i. I initially liked D1 better because it felt like it had more of an open flow and less of a sort of pinch point when you were walking in. But then I looked at the size of the ADA stalls and um, definitely prefer the larger ADA stalls. Um, I assume within, and again, maybe not to assume, but will will we be able to do one of the sinks um, in that row to be a slightly lower sink? Um, I don't know if that's appropriate for yes uh okay so we can, and, in order to okay. accommodate somebody yes we can make an adjustment in one of the sinks okay great thanks and thank you again i really appreciate um yep. the, the the grit and fortitude to continue to uh to work this out for us so thank you very much i appreciate it so alex again just so i'll be clear you're you're inclined towards this uh alternative that we're now being shown d2 correct thanks very much christine um, yeah, my favorite is also the D2. Again, it, it just, all the doors seem to be clear. I like the two large ADA stalls at the bottom with the room for changing uh, stations with uh, strollers. Right. And I like how there's an extra large, um, the other stall on the upper right. And um, yeah, it, you know, it leads you in on a, a little bit of a tight corridor there, but I think it fits everything nicely and it's very intuitive. And yeah. good. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, no problem. Sean? I like this one too. I think this one uh, responds to everything that we raised and it's, yeah, it's very um, good use of space. So uh, this is my favorite. Uh, and I'll just say for myself, Tony, this is, um, uh, I like it a lot. I think you've responded, and I think it's really quite an ingenious design. Uh, we've really heard what has been said over a couple of meetings and has managed to, I think, accommodate suggestions, which uh, at least initially seem to be moving in different directions. So it, it just seems like this is a really terrific uh, proposal. Great, so. Thanks. I, does that this give you now enough to move forward to do whatever other work you need? And are we going to hear about the plumbing variance issue? Craig? Yes. Right. So the, the first question uh, to, to, to Tony and his team sounds like, yes, you, you guys have enough direction to, to keep moving on. Yes, we do. Um, the second question, second part of your question, Austin. Uh, so we reached out to the local plumbing inspector, Ray Shipman, yep. and uh, and he responded that, as predicted or as as anticipated, any use that is not specifically listed in the Mass Plumbing Code regarding gender and design will require a variance. So he has sort of given us the uh, the green light to proceed to the next step 
and applying uh, for variance with the, uh, the plumbing board. Um, I think, as I mentioned last week, that is that will be an, an additional service. And so if we if it pleases the committee, we can ask Feingold Alexander to assemble a, a proposal to guide us, guide the project through that process. Um, it is something that we would like to do during design. So like the sooner, the better. Um, so I'll, I'll put that out. I'll take a moment to see if anyone's got any questions or thoughts. So just to be clear, so that I'm, I'm clear, we can't do what we're now saying we want to do without going through this variance process. Correct. And that has been confirmed with the plumbing inspector. Right. And do you have, Craig, from your experience, any sense of what the extra cost roughly would be? Um, I do not. Um, Josephine, do you have a, a figure in mind or a range where you would anticipate? Uh, just sort of an order of magnitude, I think, would be helpful. Yep. Um, I don't at the moment. Okay. Uh, I can certainly get you one um, pretty quickly. Yeah, let's get it as quickly as we can get it. Um, that would be that that would be great. Uh, given given that we need to do this, we need to do this. Craig. Yes. Very good. Um. Next items, uh, just a quick report on the uh, plan for temporary library space. So uh, nothing definitive to report, but uh, Sharon and I have uh, been working towards identifying. So we, the Sharon had previously identified the needs. Uh, we had previously reached out to the market to see what was available. Um, Sharon has rekindled that effort. Uh, once we know what's in the market, um, the next step will be to identify sort of the best opportunities and then secure those spaces as the uh, as the schedule is sort of indicating now is around the time to start doing that. Um, so hopefully in the next uh, over the next couple of weeks we'll have more definitive reports to give you on that. Great. And then last thing uh, is the the question about the tally report. Yeah. Um, uh, this would be another additional service. Uh, Josephine, do you have uh, an approximate fee for that for that effort? I will get you that ASAP oh. as well. <laughs> okay. Great, great. Again, another great thing about having kind of these rapid fire meetings is information can can come back to you guys pretty quick. Uh, and then hold, the last- hold, hold, on, hold on one second, Craig. Thank yes. you, just hold on one second. Sean? Can you just remind me what the tally report is again? Josephine, would you, uh, you want me? Yeah, please to respond to that. Um, so the tally report is one of the pieces of software we use to run the building analysis for the um, life cycle assessment of the mm -hmm. of the building. Um, and we had done that back in 2020 for the sustainability report, and we would um, put that information into the proposal yeah. for the ad service. So is this essentially to kind of take the current assumptions around the mechanical systems and everything like that, and sort of test it or kind of project it out and see how, how it comes out. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Craig, back to you. Thank you. Uh, and then the last thing I just wanted to address um, this process of meeting uh, weekly and the design team providing information a couple of days in advance has been working very well, I think. Um, unfortunately, I dropped the ball this week. As everyone on the committee knows, they received their um, draft presentation about 30 minutes before the meeting. So I apologize for that. Um, to prevent, so we do have a couple more of these meetings. Um, to prevent that happening again, I was trying to brainstorm about how, um, what to do. And I thought perhaps if it's okay with, uh, with you, Austin, uh, the design team can copy you on the draft presentation. And then if you see that I haven't responded or done something with it, you can, uh, you can give me a nudge. Uh, alternatively, we could have the design team uh, distribute it to the entire committee. Um, also fine, uh, whatever you guys think is best. Well, I think it should be distributed to the entire committee. Um, and if I followed what you said, I'm happy to nudge you to do something, but I'd like not to be in a position where I have to nudge you to do it. 
So That's I would exciting. actually suggest that the nudge come from internal the colliers rather than from us. So what what I so the second the second idea I propose is that Feingold Alexander instead of sending to me and then yep. or colliers and then colliers forwarding on to the yep. committee just Send for the next us. couple of meetings just uh, have it yep. go directly from Feingold Alexander copy colliers but then go to the, to the okay so that doesn't we don't have to nudge you to nudge them right okay that's fabulous and who's going to nudge them uh so i'll, I'll nudge them <laughs> okay that's good. so we, we have week, we have weekly Craig. meetings exactly we have weekly <laughs> meetings and we we talk about it what happened this time is uh they, they sent me the email as promised and it just languished in my uh that's fine other emails. That, that's fine that, that's uh i think um i think that's a venal not a mortal sin so i think you're good <laughs> And that's all for me. Okay. Thank you, Craig. Thank you to our good colleagues from FAA. Yet another very hopeful uh, and very impressive um, piece of work. So thank you very much. So we're now down to item six, subcommittee reports. My good colleague and friend, Christine, do we have a report from the design subcommittee? Nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Alex, outreach. Um, so the only thing is more of a question in terms of process. So as part of outreach, we are trying to stay connected with um, our partners in the Burnett Art Gallery, with our partners at the Strong House, with our partners in terms of we have uh, two staff members within the library who are acting as liaisons for the entire staff to be collecting feedback. So I guess, one, I don't know that we're necessarily passing the feedback on to this entire group. Um, you know, I don't, I guess I want to know the process of making sure the feedback gets where it needs to be and the people who need to see it are seeing it. Well, it would kind of depend on what the feedback is. I mean, if the feedback is what I would describe as technical, then I think the right vehicle is to communicate the feedback to the library director and through the library director to FAA or to Craig. If the feedback is conceptual, you know, move a room or do something different, then that feedback needs to come to our you know whole committee i would think yeah i mean by way, by way of example um you know we got specific feedback from the children's department about colors and you know the whole primary versus you know so i mean so i know for me personally as a committee member it's been helpful to see information coming when i'm making these having to make these decisions i'm doing it in the context of what the staff is saying or what the burnett art gallery is saying so um I think maybe the default is um, that the feedback should be passed to either the design subcommittee or the, the committee. We should all know what it is that is being said. Again, if it's at the level of, you know, have the door handles here or the door handles there, I don't think that's, but on okay. questions of color or questions like that, I think we we, we all want to know about it. Right. Flooring, flooring choices, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so next item is correspondence. Um, no, no, no letters that I know of, no correspondence, no topics, not anticipated 48 hours in advance. But it looks like we have 10 attendees. Again, very grateful for people's attention. This is now an opportunity for public comment. If any member of the public would wish to speak, if you would signify by raising your virtual hand, Bob Pam, let's bring Bob in if we can. I'll get to that. Bob? Okay. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the last meeting, I had forwarded a photograph of another library's children's room, and I'm just asking whether that was passed on to you. Thank you, Bob. So, FAA, you got that. The answer, yes. Hold on one second, Bob. Yeah. FAA, Craig, did you get that? It's not ringing a bell. Sharon? I can send it again. I don't know that I sent. No, I think I sent it to FAA. Was it the too. one with the little castle in the corner? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now it is ringing a bell. Oh, yep. Okay. So again, just to be clear, it's it's in the process. FAA has it. Craig, you have it. 
correct? That's okay. fine. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for doing that. It was actually a lovely view. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other member of the public? I see no hands. Again, thank you to everybody who's attended. I think we are we are we are done. Any other business that I'm missing? Okay. So thank you very much. Stay well. Happy Valentine's Day. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you all. Good night. Yeah.